If you embellish the opinion with confidence and cockiness, then you're getting into uh, generating hatred and hatred and hatred and hatred. Yep, that's another right-wing media personality, spilling the goods on what people like him do so well. See, he's not your sweet old grandpa accidentally spreading fake news. So a lot of people say, you really believe the stuff you say? I don't know, it's for you to figure out. <laughs> Why do people believe morons? and con men, and those who aren't even trying to conceal their lies at this point. I mean, really, what exactly is it that gets certain Americans so bent out of shape that they would rather believe someone who they know is lying to them than hear the truth? I think part of it is that even though knowledge is power, the truth hurts. It's kind of like a snake shedding its old skin, or finding out Santa isn't real, or exercising a muscle. The process of growth and change can be painful, but those who have taken the journey know it's worth it. Yet there are forces that don't want the average American to have more knowledge or power. For example, business says, let us tell you what to buy, what trends to follow, and what you're missing out on. Religion says, don't worry about thinking critically, just surrender, because it's all God's will anyway. And then there's the internet trolls, conspiracy theorists, and other f***ing idiots who say vaccines cause autism, we never landed on the moon, and it snowed near me last winter, so climate change is a hoax, because rejecting all conventional wisdom feels good, like you're a member of an elite group of patriots. And there is no entity on the planet that is a more perfect combination of business, religion, and f***ing idiots than the Republican Party. The GOP and their army of just delightful talking heads are determined to make the average American less educated, less empowered, and less free. Their assault on human intelligence has honed in on its prime target, which is the exact opposite of them. Doesn't favor profits over people, doesn't enforce a strict social hierarchy, and doesn't cater to the lowest common denominator, science. Science is the entire span of human intelligence in solid form, and it has given us everything from cures to infectious diseases to a phone in your pocket that by converting data packets into radio waves and communicating through a worldwide interlocking system of cell towers can sustain everyone's massive porn addiction. <laughs> so to combat this attack on science and to remind ourselves that most of us are better than this, here is a teeny tiny history of human intelligence. The first science experiments go back 9,000 years. Early humans were simply trying to figure out the scary world around them, which more often than not meant trying a lot of weird shit. I mean, someone had to figure out that some mushrooms do this, and some do this. But more often than not, early man retreated into the safe but deluded confines of religion. What, what about God? You, you heard him! He clapped and said, no! You think thunder is God clapping? The ancient Greeks were the first to think differently, to see man as the arbiter of his own destiny. Their use of the scientific method laid the groundwork for our modern civilization, 
developing many inventions we still use today, as well as concepts that serve as the backbone of modern civilization. And early societies worldwide were flourishing more and more with advancements in science. But the collapse of ancient Rome in the 5th century would forever alter the course of human intelligence. The fragmented nation-states that emerged lacked the large urban centers that shared scientific knowledge and maintained trade routes. In a world more disconnected, the scared masses once again turned to religion. You'll never defeat God! You'll never win! Never! Never ever! Never! Oh boy, starting a long era of religious wars, population decline, decreased rights for women, plagues, famine, plummeting literacy rates, racist pogroms, selling tickets to heaven, really bad doctors, and just an era of suckiness, sometimes known as the Dark Ages. Yeah, life was pretty shitty during the Dark Ages. Exactly what you would expect when everyone's searching for the Kingdom of Heaven, all up within themselves. Certain technologies, like the sturdy concrete used to build the Colosseum and the Pantheon, were literally forgotten. They couldn't be rebuilt during this era if they tried. And no one tried, because everyone had the plague. The Black Death that killed half of Europe could have been stopped had there not been so many rats and fleas around and people, you know, showered from time to time. Yet at the time, the foremost authority on plague business was Francis King Philip VI, who, from his house. palace of gold, said the plague was actually caused April by bad air due to an alignment comes of from three planets. China. Oh my god, shut the f up, Philip! The good news is that Europe started showering again, and eventually rebounded from this little dip into stupidity. Oh, a thousand years later. A thousand? <gasps> what, 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 what? <coughs> Are you serious? Yep, one thousand years. By then the population was less dead, and small villages were replaced by larger towns. A renewed interest in Greek philosophy spurred the growth of universities, and the printing press brought knowledge to the masses, leading to the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, the Age of Revolution, and modernity as we know it today. Science has brought about an era where we are safer and have a higher quality of life than at any other time in human history. When we use our human intelligence to pursue the truth we push the boundaries of what's possible. So it's no wonder that countries with good education systems, strong independent journalism, and high voter participation are the happiest and most democratic. Yet even though the Dark Ages are over, the opportunistic conmen, religious charlatans, and half-witted kings have all been repurposed for the 21st century. Which brings us back to the beginning. Hey, you're right, stupid science bitch couldn't even make I more smarter. Right, let's get out of here, man. <laughs> For the past 50 years, the GOP has been working tirelessly to make Americans as stupid as possible. And they have tried everything. Cutting funding for schools. Cutting funding for science. Demonizing universities. Fake news. Alternative facts helping platforms that spread fake news, censoring government scientists, foreign disinformation campaigns, non-stop outright lying, making science political, making corporate profits the only thing that matters, and being really, really, really stupid themselves. Dating back to when they argued that cigarettes were healthy for you, Republicans have mastered the art of obstructing scientific truths. But the Trump phenomenon takes everything one step further in that it is not simply an attack on science or an attempt at misinformation. It is a complete rejection of objective reality. The facts are simple. America has the highest concentration of wealth on Earth 
including the highest paid CEOs and the most billionaires. Yet compared to people in other industrialized nations, the average American works harder, yet is paid less, retires later, has more debt, less vacation time, and a shorter life expectancy. This is not because of immigrants, entitled millennials, coastal elites, Obama, Hillary, or political correctness. This is because of the massive transfer of your tax dollars away from programs and services that benefit you and into the hands of the ultra-wealthy, all planned by the Republican Party. But to many, the truth doesn't sound good. I mean, who wants to admit they voted for people who've been conning them their entire lives? What sounds better is that America is the land chosen by God himself, and it will always and forever be number one. And if you have anything to say otherwise, then you're the problem. Because the stupider you are, the easier it is to steal your money right in front of you. We see many times throughout history that people with injured pride, people who feel like the world has passed them by, look for love and acceptance in strange places. They find cults or ridiculous conspiracy theories or demagogues like Donald Trump who tell them everything they want to hear, clinging to their ignorance and hate because they sense that once those are gone, they'll have no choice but to deal with their own pain. The GOP has studied their history. They know this. Yet people keep falling for it. Trump has created a world without facts, only feeling. What feels good to me personally must be the ultimate truth of the cosmos, the politics of giant egos and micro dicks. Micro dick loser. But see, these people don't look like they feel good. They look confused and afraid searching for answers in a world that they're no longer capable of understanding. The good news, however, is that weaponized stupidity can be combated. In fact, research shows that if you take away the right-wing talking head in someone's ear, they lose all those ignorant, bigoted views pretty fast. So here's five tips to combat anti-intellectualism. One, use your human intelligence. Only get news from real sources. Be knowledgeable about the issues and watch out for confirmation bias. Two, don't spread propaganda, period. Even if it's to correct or mock, Trump thrives on his words seeping into people's brains and normalizing. Let his ideas become irrelevant and die on their own. Three, Studies showed the most effective way to deal with misinformation is to pre-inoculate false info. So if you say that there's an overwhelming consensus among climate scientists that climate change is man-made, follow it up with, what Fox News does to undermine this is have a panel of non-scientists discuss their thoughts about the matter, to simulate doubt and uncertainty amongst quote-unquote experts when in fact there is none. Four. Call out your racist uncle at Thanksgiving dinner. Studies show people who make bigoted statements when confronted usually feel bad and adjust their behavior and attitudes to avoid future social embarrassment. Making certain topics controversial is one way those in power keep people divided. Don't be afraid of political discussion. And finally, check your voter registration status right this minute. And from this point forward, whether it's big elections or small elections, vote out the corporate sucking religious whack job fascist idiots who did all this. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded.